In this video, I'm going to be exploring the filters page of Virus Control. The filters are one of the most important sections of any subtractive synthesizer, as they allow you to shape the tonal characteristics of the sound by suppressing certain frequencies and emphasizing others. So there are two main filters in the Virus TI, both of which have four basic modes, low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop. For now, it'll be easier to explain the difference between these modes if I just work with filter 1, so I'm going to move filter balance all the way to the left. So at the moment, we are in low pass mode, and this means that the filter will attenuate or reduce the level of any frequencies higher than that of the filter cutoff parameter, which is assigned to the main controller here. Now right now it's set to 127, so it'll allow all frequencies through. Now the init patch has two saw waves there, and they're quite uh, good for experimenting with filters because they contain all the harmonics, so you can uh, hear much more clearly what's actually happening to the sound. So listen as I play this sound and turn down the cutoff frequency. So because the filter is attenuating those frequencies above the cutoff point, the sound becomes warmer and duller as the cutoff gets lower. And eventually, if I turn it down low enough, pretty much everything is filtered out. So the cutoff determines the point in the frequency spectrum from which the filter starts having an effect. And there are also two very important parameters which work in conjunction with the cutoff, and these are resonance and key follow. Resonance emphasizes the frequencies that lie just above and below the cutoff frequency. And this is represented by a little peak here in the graphic display. And the effect of this is to make the filter speak as you sweep the cutoff around. And this is an essential characteristic of many classic synth sounds. If I turn it up really quite high now, and then sweep cutoff very slowly, you'll really hear how it brings out the harmonics. Key follow forces the cutoff to move as you play up the keyboard. You can hear as I play a couple of octaves up here that the sound pretty much disappears. And this is because most of the frequencies up here are well above the cutoff point of the low pass filter. In other words, there's hardly any low stuff left to pass through. However, I can uh, compensate for this by setting key follow to a positive value. And over here we have the key base parameter, and this determines the key from which the key follow starts to work. You can adjust it by clicking on the keyboard and dragging it left or right like that. And the way it works is that the bass note itself will be unaffected by key follow, um, but if you set a positive amount, then notes above this note will get brighter and notes below will get duller. And if we set a negative amount of key follow, then notes above the key base will get dull and notes below will get brighter. So basically, we use key follow to make a heavily filtered sound more playable over a wider range of the keyboard. So let's take a look at the other filter modes now. In high pass mode, the filter attenuates frequencies which lie below the cutoff. So to allow all frequencies through, we have to turn cutoff to zero. And if you turn cutoff higher, the sound will get thinner. And again, you can apply uh, a lot of emphasis with the resonance parameter. In band pass mode, we effectively have a combination of a low pass and a high pass. So the filter only allows a narrow band of frequencies to pass through. And this makes it a very useful filter to help sounds sit in the mix, particularly pad sounds, I find. The way resonance works now is that at zero resonance you get the widest band and as you increase the resonance um, it narrows the band and it also has the effect of boosting the frequencies that lie within it still. Band stop mode is basically the opposite of a band pass filter as it will attenuate the frequencies within the band. In some synthesizers this is referred to as a notch filter. And if you want the widest notch, then you set resonance to zero. Um, 
And as you increase resonance, then you get a uh, yeah, narrower band. Maybe something more subtle effect. Let's have a look at the parameters in the Filter Common tab now. At the top here, we have the Oscillator Volume and Saturation slider. So you control the level of the oscillator output with the left side of the range here. And then past the center point, you increase the level of saturation. Now that's not going to do anything if you don't have a saturation curve selected. So you click on the saturation type here and choose from the list. I'll choose hard. We get uh, quite an audible distortion here. In the saturation types here, we've got um, light, soft, middle, and hard, which are all uh, variations on uh, traditional distortion. Uh, digital is uh, even harsher than that. And then we have some more exotic ones like uh, sinusoid wave shaper, which gives a uh, completely different kind of sound. And some lo-fi effects like the bit reducer and rate reducer. This is bit reduction. And the rate reducer is a, a very destructive effect. There are also some one-pole filters available and uh, three types which have the plus follow suffix. And this means that a uh, key follow is applied so that the intensity of the effect is graded according to how high up the keyboard you play. Now the rest of the parameters in the common tab are used to determine the role of the second filter. By default, the virus filters are set up in series in a four-pole configuration. And what this means is that the signal passes first through filter 1, then the saturation stage, and from there it passes through filter 2 before moving on to the amplifier stage. So as filter 1 and filter 2 are both two-pole filters, we end up with a four-pole array. And the number of poles a filter has determines how steep the attenuation is above or below the cutoff point. So the more poles, the more drastic the effect of the filter. Now for the series configuration to work properly, you want filter balance to remain in the central position. So let's just set that to zero now. So let's check out the difference between a two-pole and a four-pole filter now. This is the four-pole sound. Two poles. So you can hear that the additional two poles there make a significant difference. It's a much darker sound. And we can add another two poles to make a serial six-pole filter. And that's darker still. Parallel mode splits the oscillator output signal into two separate paths which lead uh, directly to each filter independently. And I find this most useful if you uh, set up a different filter type for filter two. Um, split mode is an uh, even more exotic variation of that, where it uh, still splits the signals, uh, but instead of uh, taking two equal feeds, it actually uh, takes specific elements from the oscillator section. Um, oscillator 1 and sub-oscillator are split off separately and sent only to filter 1, and oscillator 2, 3, and uh, the noise generator are sent straight to the uh, filter 2 input. And uh, in an added twist, uh, if we just turn up the sub-oscillator now and the noise, you can hear them coming out of separate channels. And you can hear that they're panned uh, hard left and right. So filter 1's on the left and filter 2 is on the right there. If you want to change that and center them both, you need to adjust the unison pan spread parameter in the oscillator page. Now to keep all of this as performer friendly as possible, uh, we have two buttons down here, cutoff link and filter link, which are both enabled by default. Cutoff link forces filter 2 cutoff to always slave to that of filter 1. You'll see that filter 1 cutoff is displayed as a value of between 0 and 127, whereas filter 2 is displayed as what's known as a bipolar parameter. So we have a central position of plus 0, and you can create a positive offset or a negative offset from filter 1. So at, fil at 0 it will be 
exactly the same as whatever you set filter one cut off to. So this is the one you use to do your filter sweeps. Let's turn up the resonance a bit. Now let's create an offset and you should be able to hear two distinct resonant peaks now. And if you disable cutoff link, then you'll see that the uh, value for filter 2 cutoff becomes unipolar again, and filter 2 is now completely independent from filter 1. Filter link enables you to adjust the resonance for uh, filter 1 and 2 simultaneously, and also envelope amount and key follow. If you want to adjust them independently, just turn filter link off, and you can do that. And turning it on again uh, doesn't automatically mean that they snap to the same value. It's only when you actually adjust one of the parameters like that that they'll snap to the same value. So let's take a look at the filter balance parameter now. Normally this needs to be in the center position so that you get the pure signal path through the serial configuration. So it goes through filter 1, saturation, filter 2. But you can use this to isolate either filter. So if we slide it to uh, the left like that, then we just isolate filter 1 and saturation. Let's put some saturation on now. So you use this if you don't want the saturated signal to uh, have any additional filtering. Slide it all the way to the right to have uh, the oscillator mix signal bypass filter 1 and saturation altogether and just go straight to filter 2. Now if you set it in between the center position and filter 2, then you create a very different situation. Essentially what you're hearing is still the output of filter 2, but that's now receiving two signal feeds, one through filter 1 and saturation, and the other uh, directly from the oscillator mix. And if we set it halfway between filter 1 and center position, then we have a mix between the output of uh, the serial routing, so the output of filter 2, and a tap which is taken from the saturation stage and mixed in with that. So now that I've explained the basic operation of the filter section, I'd like to come back to filter 1 and explain what the analog mode is all about. So now that I've uh, covered the basic operation of the two filters, I'd like to come back to filter 1 and explain what analog mode is all about. Now, analog mode is a completely different filter model from the four main filter modes, and it was inspired by the four-pole ladder filter of the legendary Minimoog synthesizer. And you'll see, as I've enabled analog mode, that the four filter types of filter 1 are now replaced by four new modes, low-pass 1-pole, 2-pole, 3-pole, and 4-pole. So if you want to get as close as possible to the sound of the Minimoogs filter, then there are two ways to do this. And the first is to work from the init patch. So let's just copy one across from part 2 like this. So we've got a serial filter mode. We enable analog mode like that, and choose low-pass 2-pole for filter 1. And the additional 2 poles of filter 2 uh, amount to the 4-pole filter that we need. Alternatively, you can isolate filter 1 and choose low-pass 4-pole mode. And besides having a different character to the classic virus filters, analog mode has two other distinctive features. Firstly, it's self-oscillating. And this means that if I turn up resonance all the way, the filter will produce a sine wave even when there's no input from the oscillator section. And secondly, there is only one type of saturation for this filter, and it is always active. So you'll see that saturation type 
is no longer available. It just says analog overdrive now. And you can push this to achieve a very natural sounding distortion. The really nice thing about the way that this filter is implemented is that we are not restricted to just the four pole ladder filter. As the different modes suggest, we can have uh, anything from a one pole filter to a four pole filter. And in fact, if we bring back uh, filter two into the play, uh, the two additional poles mean that we can even achieve a five or six pole filter if we want. You can clearly hear the character of the analog mode if we set cut off somewhere around the middle like this, play a chord and then turn up resonance high enough that you get this fantastic growling effect. Now listen to the difference as I reduce the number of poles. And let's have a little play with the saturation amount now. Notice that uh, when I increase the saturation beyond a certain point that the resonance will become rather indistinct. But there are also some nice sweet spots where the interaction between the resonance and the distortion creates some lovely harmonic motion. So let's take a look at the envelope section now. I'm just going to initialize the patch before we go any further. Now the Virus TI has two main envelopes, and these are used to control uh, certain aspects of the sound over time. The filter envelope targets the filter cutoff of both filters, and the amplifier envelope controls the overall level of the sound. Let's start with the amplifier envelope. So beneath the display window here, we have five controllers. A is attack, D is decay, S is sustain, and R is release. And these are the four that I'll be dealing with first. So with the current settings, the amp envelope is acting as a basic gate. It opens to full volume as soon as I press a key, and closes very quickly when I let it go. Now listen to what happens as I increase the attack time. So if I wanted to make a pad sound, this is somewhere around where I would take the attack, I think. But the sound is still ending too abruptly for a pad sound. So to change that and make it fade to silence more gracefully, I'm going to increase the release time now. Let's go for a short staccato type sound now. Now for this I first need to take the attack and release phases right back down again. But I also need to make the sound fade quickly to silence even before I release the key. So next I need to take the sustain level down to zero. And I also need to make the fade to silence happen quickly. Because at the moment that's still holding on for quite a long time. And this is because the decay rate is set to maximum value at the moment. So it's taking as long as possible to fade to silence. So if I take that right down... And now I've got a short, plucky type sound. Now for decaying sounds like this, I also find it makes sense to set the release time to the same value as decay. So now, it, what value did I set it to? 43. So let's put this to the same. And now it makes no difference whether I hold or release the key quickly, the sound will behave the same. So with these four parameters, you can create a very wide range of sounds. But we also have a fifth controller here called slope. And we can use this to make the envelope open up again once it reaches the sustain phase but by moving it towards the positive extreme. And basically, the higher the value you set here, the quicker it will rise back to full volume.
Alternatively, I can create an abrupt drop to silence by using an extreme negative amount for slope. And this works best, I find, if you first set uh, sustain to a relatively high but not maximum value. Let's choose 124 for now. And then set slope to a very low value. And then set decay relatively high. And then adjust it carefully to suit. So with this, you can get some very short sounds that maintain a little more energy. So in the same way that we can shape the volume of the sound over time with the amplifier envelope, we can also shape the timbre of the sound by using the filter envelope to modulate the cutoff of the filters. Now the important thing to remember here is that for the filter envelope to do anything, you first need to set the cutoff to a value from where there is somewhere for it to be moved. So in other words, if the filter is already open like this, increasing envelope amount won't do anything. So let's turn envelope, uh, uh, sorry, filter cutoff right down. And now listen as I increase the uh, amount of envelope modulation. So you can hear we've got a nice bright sort of plucking sound now. And that's courtesy of the uh, very fast attack and relatively quick decay. We can make it decay even faster, of course. We'll get nice long sweeps, which sound much more interesting if we increase the resonance first. Now, the sustain uh, we use to raise the uh, floor to where it, the envelope closes again. With the slope parameter, uh, we can make it open back up to uh, the maximum level achieved by the attack phase. And again, the faster you want it, the higher the value you give it. And we can also make it uh, close very suddenly once it reaches the sustain phase. So it uses slightly longer decay. So that kind of sucking away effect there is caused by the linear curve of the slope parameter. The decay is what we call an exponential curve, which happens in a much more natural way, much like the decay of a vibrating string. Now, with the filter envelope, we also have a, what's called a polarity control here. And at the moment, it's saying that we're using the positive polarity. And this is why we needed to turn the um, uh, filter cutoff down for the envelope to sweep it up and back down again. If we click on uh, the button, it changes to negative polarity, and then it generally makes more sense to take the cutoff back up again, and the cutoff will be swept in the opposite direction. <coughs> And so there's all sorts of interesting shapes you can achieve with that, especially if you choose um, a positive slope for one and, and a negative for the other, like we actually have at the moment there. And you, when you start messing with different filter types as well, so for a high pass on filter two and a low pass on filter one, then interesting things can happen. <coughs> Down here in the Amplifier tab, we have the Patch Volume Control, which determines the maximum output level of the entire patch on this part, including any effects like delay and reverb. Pan, or Panorama, allows you to set the position of the sound in the stereo field. And we've also put a Delay and Reverb Send here, so you don't have to go to the effects page to use those. And lastly, you may have noticed that there are several parameters dotted around labelled VEL, and these uh, allow you to determine how much their target parameter is affected by velocity, which is how hard you hit the key. Uh, they're all bipolar controls, meaning you can affect a positive amount of modulation if you uh, turn it to the right, and a negative amount if you turn it to the left. The most common one to use, actually, is the velocity to volume, because this means that the harder you hit the keys, the louder the sound goes. So if you're willing to spend a little time setting these up, you can create some very expressive patches.